Hey, this is the franchise, Shane Douglas. When you want all the information about the great sport of professional wrestling, all you have to do is come right here, the official podcast for Wrestling News Source. You're listening to the official Wrestling News Source podcast. For all your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com or find us on Facebook by searching WrestlingNewsSource.com or WNS Podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Daniel Heron, Tyler Bear, and Doug. Right. <laughs> What's up, everyone? I am Daniel Heron. I'm Tyler A. Bear. And I'm Ryan. And we welcome you to episode 124 of the official podcast for oh. WrestlingNewsSource.com. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com. Check us out on Facebook, WrestlingNewsSource.com. You can find us on Facebook, WNS Podcast, on YouTube, WNS Video, on iTunes, Wrestling News Source Podcast. If you want to follow us on Twitter, is at WNS Podcast for the main site, WNS Source, and WNS Podcast for talent. Yeah. So there you go. So welcome to the show, everyone. Uh, Doug's feeling under the weather today, so he will not be here like we said at the intro. Ryan joining us today. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah thank you guys. Back. Welcome back. back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So our, everybody out there. Our unofficial substitute. I guess, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but welcome back to the show. It's always, it's always a pleasure to have you no on. No problem. I'd like to be here. We're going to appreciate, you know, not just me and Tyler going back and forth all night. So yeah. it's always nice to have a third perspective. Uh, as we talk about what's going on in the world of wrestling, going to be discussing uh, WWE Extreme Rules, also Raw as far as uh, what went down um, over the over the past week. Uh, also, our future plans coming up. Going to have a lot of fun. Uh, I know this co- upcoming weekend, going to get to celebrate my birthday weekend at Comic Palooza. So uh, it's going to be all kinds of fun. And uh, if you're in the Houston area, definitely uh, stop on by George R. Brown Convention Center. In downtown Houston, it's going to be all kinds Doomsday of Doomsday is going to be there. Doomsday will NWA. be there. NWA. NWA. Yeah. NWA Houston. And someone who's wrestled a lot of countries. And he's always hungry. He's hungry. And he And apparently is... he wants you to holler if you hear him. <laughs> he, uh, what is he? He's the... Uh... Freakzilla. Uh, he's Big the, uh... Bad Booty Daddy. Yeah, there you go. Big Bad Booty Daddy. He's also the modifier. You mean moderator? Shut up. <laughs> the one and only Scott Steiner. Oh, he yeah. He's going to be there. So hopefully we'll get to hang out with him for a little bit, get a picture or two. Uh, although Tyler and I are we're going on separate days. Split. Split down the middle. Split. Yeah. So who knows? At least, you know, you can sort of give me a, give me advice as far as where as everything is. That would be So you can just go there. Yeah. Get before, you know, people get there. And, hey. Hopefully we get to see our friend John David Guerrero. Yes, uh, he he will Nightmare be there. Nightmare Pro Wrestling. Not only uh, is he going to be there, but he has uh, some new Daniel Bryan posters, like the ones that we got with CM Punk last year. And he told me this earlier today that he is holding three of them for us. Ooh, so, you know, good guy, good guy right there. Yes. So uh, go and check out his page on Facebook, Nightmare Pro Wrestling. Tell them that the WNS podcast sent you by, and uh, he'll probably say thank you. I don't know if he'll give you a special deal or anything, but he'll definitely say thank you. So, uh, so yeah. So, uh, Ryan, are you going to be able to, to get to go to Actually, Comic Palooza? Not this time. Not this Once time. Again, which sucks. Work is getting in the Actually, way. Actually, you know, no. Oh, no? I, I'm off oh. <laughs> Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, but I got family coming in from California. Oh, so okay. I'll probably be in Houston for a while, and then they'll come out here and – I'm hanging out with them we'll be, for a while. You happen to be in Houston for a few well, I, I, like, well, I works. I would be in Houston, <laughs> but it just to go pick them up at the airport. Oh, gotcha, so. gotcha. There you go. So I might see you on the on the I guess on the on the, on the flyby, cross each other's yeah. path mm-hmm. on the highway. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you go? Okay. So, uh, but yeah, so uh, you know, if Have you happen fun. to be, yeah, so Tyler will be up there Saturday, and my, I'm, I'll be up there on Sunday. Hopefully, Doug. Uh, yeah, hopefully, we'll be yeah. feeling better, uh, well enough to to go on Sunday. Um, if you're hearing this now, uh, post some uh, messages on our page saying, get yes. better, Doug. Yeah, get wish, be- wish him well. well. Yeah. So, uh, you know. Email him some soup. It's never, it's never, <laughs> yeah, it's never good whenever, uh, when someone gets sick. So hopefully, you know, Doug, we're thinking about you. Hope you, hope you start feeling better. Uh, but going uh, to dive right on into uh, to Extreme Rules. Extreme um, Rules. WWE went extreme, I guess, for... <laughs> You know, as far as extreme could get for PG. Before we get into the matches, okay. I want to say that me and Doug. Doug and I. Me and Doug. Doug and I. Uh, <laughs> do what 
He always corrects me. Um, I don't know. It irks you. But, uh, no, <laughs> we went to eat before we went to the bowling alley, and uh, I got on the w- WWE app, which showed the pre-show, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or is that what you call it before yeah. the Miz? The pre-show, yeah. It was the pre- That's the no, whole the thing. Show. It was the post-show. Post-show. No, I'm well, sorry. Yeah, the pre-show, pre-show and then it was like the match of the Miz. Yeah. yeah. And they had a lady, I don't know her name, <laughs> uh, yeah, Wade she's, Barrett. She's, she's fairly new. She's only been on, on the board for probably like two or three weeks yeah. mm-hmm. but she has uh she's been on raw a couple of times i know she's been on smackdown a couple of times uh but i don't know her name wade barrett wade barrett uh titus o'neill oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> make it a win <laughs> and mick foley but when i i got on the app uh mick foley was talking about it. they're talking about the john cena match yeah and titus o'neill and wade barrett they weren't in character or the hills are supposed to be um just want to point that out. And it froze right after they got done talking. and Because yeah. I wanted to see The Miz versus Cody Rhodes, and it didn't mm-hmm. work. And Ryan said the same thing. Yeah, it, it froze, his. and then it cut back on, like, mid-match. That, when really? I seen it, yeah, when I seen it, it, was, it, it cut right back in the middle. I think um, The Miz was, like, in some type of submission. Then it turned around, and then it was, like, it was, like, right at the end. Like, you know, mm-hmm. maybe call it maybe less than a minute. Because we watched the, the pre-show – the match on your app for WrestleMania and it worked. Yeah, but it didn't. Might no, have it was on their end. They even day. said it. That it was on their end. That was it. Uh, experience difficulties. So yeah, they push it so much. Yeah, yeah. Pat, so so go get your app. They push. <laughs> no, don't get your app. No. Um. But yeah, it's just it's just weird. You know, they they need to fix their servers if they're going to be pushing the app so hard on this. Uh, one person said we did have some feedback uh, from from this past week. They did mention that um you know the. TV is going to be counting online tune in, like online tune ins as well. Uh, I guess based on uh, how many people are using the app or something like that, or you know. So I guess whatever's trending might have a purpose now. Who knows? But it's all pointless to me because, yeah. like, like Doug said last week, you know, my attention span is bad enough as it is. I don't need a, a second <laughs> screen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need a second screen option telling me, "Oh, watch the interview instead of the match" or something. You know, it's just it is distracting, man. I didn't understand what, like, what seriously? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just want to, but I just want to tell you about that little bit of yeah. the pre-show, and apparently the post-show causing all kinds of waves as well, which um, we will get into. Today. We will get into. After uh, after we discuss uh, extreme rules, uh, the opening contest got to see Chris Jericho going up against Fun Dango. So uh, and I thought this match was all right. Um, to me, it seemed uh, it seemed like it was the same caliber as all their matches. Yeah, to me at least. But I mean, it wasn't really anything new. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, the match was okay. Uh, Jericho picked up the win on this one. Oh, by the way, guys, uh, not to cut you off. Uh, I missed part of the pay per view, so I'm looking right now. I think I missed the first three matches. So okay. I'm sitting side listening, to y'all, but I'll pick up in the middle. <laughs> so Ryan, <laughs> what did you think about the opening <laughs> match? Uh, well, see, uh, when Fun Dog <laughs> beat him in a, uh, you know, uh, uh, about that. Yeah. <laughs> Fandango's the best world heavyweight champion. champion. What? <laughs> <laughs> he cashed it in. <laughs> what? When the Dance Matthew of the Stars <laughs> Championship. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but yeah, so I mean the match was all right. Um, nothing really memorable to talk about it. You know, Jericho gets his redemption from WrestleMania, which is he's sort of had a habit of doing here lately. Uh, you know, over the past few years, he'll lose at Mania and then go on and win the next pay per view or something like that. Because I remember they had the, the the big long controversy with him and Ziggler. I think it was for SummerSlam. Yeah, where they're like, oh, he can't win the big one, and then he beat Ziggler at SummerSlam. They're like, he won the big one. I'm like, the big one's for the championship, and he's like a six-time heavyweight <laughs> champion, so right. uh, don't tell me he can't win the big one. But, uh, but yeah, but, you know, for Extreme Rules, it was just a traditional one-on-one match. Nothing really that blew me away, um, but it was okay. So it was extreme. Yeah. Really and, the, and the crowd was, uh, was pretty into it. Um, you know the crowd uh, for here and for Raw was 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 pretty good. I would say. Um, At least in St. Louis or somewhere in uh, Extreme Rules was in St. Louis. Missouri. I'm not sure where Raw. Well, I was, was about to say wherever it is. It was Randy Orton's hometown. Yeah, yeah. it was it was definitely St. Louis for for Extreme mm-hmm. Rules. 
Uh, but the uh, the next match we got to see Dean Ambrose going up against Kofi Kingston for the United States Championship. Um, it was uh, a good it was a good showing. I liked the fact that Dean Ambrose came to the ring alone, mm-hmm. you know, because it it made it seem like okay, you know, Roman's Roman Reigns and and Seth Rollins they've got to collect themselves for their upcoming yeah. match later on, and they believe that Dean Ambrose can go in and take care mm-hmm. of business. He, he, right on. Both like. Him and, you know, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins, they won by themselves, you know? Yeah. Instead of all together, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, they, and whenever, like, you know, like Tyler mentioned, whenever they had the tag match, uh, Ambrose was not at ringside for that one. So they wanted to, to win without question as far as what happened. But Dean Ambrose going up against Kofi Kingston. Um, a lot of good, uh, you know, action. Um you know, Kofi Kingston doing the traditional high spots that he likes to do. Um, I, I'm I'm getting kind of unweary about his uh, thing where he puts his opponent up on the top turnbuckle and then he does the jump and, you know, he spreads his legs to, to catch himself on the top rope and then he hits him for the 10 count. It's gotten to where, like, the past, like, year or two, he can only get, like, one leg up and then he catches it and then he – Brings the other leg up and was there a time them. period he stopped doing that though? Yeah, yeah. he was recently yeah. bringing it back. And uh, yeah, he started bringing it back, but he <laughs> he hasn't been hitting it. Um, so I would probably you know make a mention you know maybe stop doing that unless you can clear it each time. But uh, love the fact that uh, Dean Ambrose used the uh, the chicken wing. Um, I thought that should have been the end of it, but I know they're trying to get. Uh, Dean Ambrose's finisher, which mm-hmm. hasn't been given a name yet, they're trying to make that the end all I, of the match. I like how, to me, like Ambrose is like he's nothing flashy. He's just yeah. a brawler. brawler yeah, yeah, he goes and in, I love that, tries to know? just tear you up. His facial and expressions like, are like yes, amazing. Like, yeah, it really is. <laughs> I, there's one point with Doug. I do agree with him because I know he's going to say Ambrose. Ambrose, he oversells things at times. Mm-hmm. Like whenever he gets hit and he likes like flopping around like a fish or whatever at times. Yeah. Uh, but I do, I do like it when he does that. And sometimes I do think he oversells sometimes. I'll, but. I'll agree with you on that. He does oversell things, but it's to enhance yeah. things. Whereas like someone like Dolph Ziggler, who does every single little thing, yeah. is overselling. Dean Ambrose only picks a spot or two, mm-hmm. you know, where it's just like, oh my god, you know, like. Uh, you know that, and he even did it on on Raw, which I absolutely loved. It was, uh, um, you know, we'll get into it later on, but it was Dana Bryan, I think, or it could have been Kofi Kingston, uh, just getting a quick kick to the to the top of uh, of Ambrose's head, and Dana he Bryan. didn't he didn't go down, and then he kind of just like started leaning and then leaning he, like, just, yeah. and leaning, and then yeah. he was just like. Ragdoll, yeah. you know, like I absolutely <laughs> love that. I think that was, I don't know, okay, I don't know. Yeah, it, it was one of the, yeah. it was one of the two, but uh, but I absolutely love that because like that's that's a legit, you know, that could that could actually happen to someone. It's like where they don't want to go down. And they're like they just fall down, but they're like they're trying to hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't they don't want to go down, but their body is making them go down instead of just like kick. Oh, I'm just down, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was. But, just, I gotta say he he does great yeah like work he does like his style with wrestling I mean him on the mic is just golden and it's just I can't wait to see more of him in the yeah. future yeah and uh, uh where he can go like I said use the chicken wing which could be a very good submission move for him to use uh, later on in the future but like I said you know they're they're trying to get his finisher where he just slams Kofi Kingston's head down on the on the mat that's a like crazy looking DDT man like, it is and uh it you know it, that's a good I always love that move and that's like a good way of yeah slam your head to the mat yeah, <laughs> yeah and it, and it's you know it's it looks effective mm-hmm. and it looks great and uh I'm digging it I'm I can't wait to hear what kind of name they use for it um the the <laughs> no, not not quite. But um, no. the what? No. <laughs> the car. No, not the car. Um, but yeah, so I'm curious to see what kind of name they give it. But Dean Ambrose does pick up the victory over Kofi Kingston, becoming the the new United States champion. So uh, much to the uh, internet's delight. You know, I know they a I, lot hey, of people had that. I'm pretty sure all three of us we yeah. believe in the Shield. Oh yeah, believe in the Shield. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> uh, next up, we got to see uh, Sheamus going up against Mark Henry in a strap match, which where they they added 
lights to the polls now. I missed most of this match because I had to step out and take a call, but I did yeah. see it a little bit like the beginning of it. Um, I'll the the match I felt was kind of a disappointment. Uh, I thought it. I thought they would use the strap a little bit more than they had. This seemed like it went quick, huh? Because I was just out for a little while and it was over before I knew um, it. It did. I mean, it didn't. It, did, it wasn't one of those long lingering matches, which is fine. Um, but the I, I just felt like they could have used the strap more. Like I felt like Mark Henry used the strap or the belt they used to to lash on Sheamus a few weeks ago. I felt like he did more damage on that than they did. In, in this match. The match yeah. yeah, and so, you know, I liked I liked what they did with the corners because it helps the fans keep track of, of this is the first the status. Time? This is the first time they've done that. Yeah, I like that. Um, they need to get control over which lights are lit up, though, because I know they turned one on, turned it off, turned yeah. it back on a couple of times. <laughs> They're just testing. It's the first, yeah. This is the first run. First <laughs> so run. I'm not going to completely be like, oh, this is a waste of time. <laughs> Why are they doing hey, this? This is stupid. Be, some of the internet fans would, or internet people will do that too. Who won? This is so stupid. Who won the match? <laughs> Seamus won the match. Well, who won the match? I didn't see it. Hey, Seamus uh, won the match. I'm pretty sure. I know I haven't seen it, but I'm pretty sure it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, um, I love the part. That um, you know, Henry is dragging around Seamus, and uh, you know, uh, Mark Henry's dragging Seamus around, touching the corner, and as uh, he starts moving off to the next one, Seamus hits the corner, and then they get to the second one, Henry touches it, then Seamus touches it, gets to the third one, Henry touches it, and he turns around, and he's like, "Wait a second, Seamus has been hitting him, you know, behind my back." So then he just throws Seamus down and. You know, they had to reset the whole thing. I, I love that small little spot because yeah. it was one of those things where he's like, hey, wait a second, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, you can't be doing that. But, um, but yeah, you know, the match, like I said, I felt it was a little disappointing. I felt like they could have gone a lot harder. Um, you know, both of these guys are brawlers. They're built to, to take punishment, and that's kind of what I was expecting. I don't know if they showed it or this was, <laughs> this was on the app or if they and, just uh, showed us on Raw or whatever. show. Or was the post show that they okay? Where, he, uh, Mark Henry was, in, Henry was in the training room, and uh, he ends up walking away out of the training room, saying he's going home. home. So going home, he's coming to Stillsby. Coming back to Stillsby. Right. So uh, he'll live in Stillsby. I, mean, I think he lives in New York now. Yeah. What? Come still, back to Stillsby. We don't. You don't need New York. Come <laughs> back to Texas. Just not the same since you went away. What? Before you lose your accent. Anyways, uh, Sheamus defeats Mark Henry in the strap match. Uh, next up, we got to see uh, Alberto Del Rio going up against Jack Swagger in an I Quit match. Um, Hello, guys. I'm just now coming to the paper. Yeah. Hey, hey. 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 All right. Welcome to the show. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, this one started out, and this one was brutal. Yeah. Uh, within the first few minutes, um, you know, just, uh, <laughs> just you know, Kendo sticks galore and I I thought I mean it was good but I kind of started going to sleep on it man because like I guess because I was a bowling alley and yeah. everybody talking to him so I well, look at it, like oh, this kind of boring I did see like some of the kendo sticks but it's like I don't know I didn't catch that much of it but yeah I, mean, um, I, caught, caught, I caught in the OC when I came in it, was, it wasn't the beginning of the match so I guess it's like midway so when I came in I was like I don't understand what's going on so I didn't know if it was a good match or not but it seemed like it was kind of going slow gotcha yeah it did it did slow down after a while. Um, but like the first few minutes, it was Swagger just being vicious and being brutal, okay, uh, uh-huh. attacking Del Rio. But then Mike Kyoto grabbed the microphone. Hey, do you want to quit? No. Hey, do you want to quit? No. Hey, do you want to quit? I'm like, oh my god. There's something I want to point out about our experience at the bowling alley. Um, <laughs> the sound was off. Yes. Oh lord. So I should have just come up here. I was watching it, it on the threw laptop. it off. Um. I know for Doug, definitely it took him out of the experience. But uh, <laughs> but we would know if the person won before they won because the sound was before oh. the thing. It's like you hear they didn't even pin him yet. <laughs> then like that. Oh, they didn't, and, oh, now they're pin him, and then yeah. we would and oh, we would hear man. the 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 whack whack, and then you would You'll see, see him, him go whack whack. Wow. So yeah. That, quite that a, took quite a delay, yeah. huh? Yeah. yeah. And then, then Del Rio made a face, so it just cracked me up because you hear him go, no, and then you can hear him go. <laughs> just a, just a <laughs> facial expression. <laughs> 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 I 
So, but yeah, like every, you know, 15 seconds, Kyoto's getting into their face going, hey, you want to quit? Hey, you want to quit? I'm like, dude, I wish you'd quit asking. I'm like, I yeah. laughed. I kind of laughed at them because of how he said it and all this stuff. But Yeah. But like, you know, the, the old, you know, traditional I quit matches, the people would grab the microphone yeah. and put it in their face saying, say it, say the word, you know. Like, yeah, that you gets know. the referee to start Yeah. Talking. Since when does the referee ask every 10 seconds? But, um, you know, like I said, it started out great, kind of died out a little bit. Um, but Del Rio ends up getting the victory then after this match. This one had the controversy. This too. one did, they did two things I've never seen before in the matches. If they start doing it this way, mm. they got started at first. Is just because someone throws in a towel, does that mean they're quit or their manager throws a towel in? I mean, that is a, a sign of, I guess, I quit. It is a sign, yeah. but I've never seen it in WWE. Well, that happened too. I think that's why I said to Bob Backlund. Didn't, like, back in the day, isn't that one, one way he won a title? I think so. Like, somebody threw the towel in or somebody, like, I thought he lost it. Like It could be. I, ma- don't, I don't know. The manager had the right to throw the towel in and say, I quit. My guy, my man can't mm-hmm. take no more. You know, he can't take no more. So, that's, yeah. like, a way of saying I quit. So, but it's been, been since Bob Backlund. So, that's, like, 80s, you know. So yeah. Like, they may, have, been, they may yeah. have done it, like, on a SmackDown right, or something yeah. since then. But nothing really that pops to mind. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Then the second one was <laughs> get the TV or get the get the monitor out. Let's yeah. uh, see. Yeah. It's like, hey, let's replay. do instant replay. Uh, for you were, you're Doug or someone's like, <laughs> oh, man, you shouldn't have done that because if you're going to do that now. Now you have to do it on every single match. But Dave Brown uh, was get at down. the – Get Down Dave Brown was there get at the down, bowling alley. Yeah. He said, "It's it's WWE. Come on, it's the alternate universe. They're yeah. gonna like ignore it. What happened? You know." But mm-hmm. <laughs> JBL, if you hear JBL, it's like, "What's going on? It's replay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's kind of weird. Like you're not a heel. Then like you can't be a heel if they have you replay. Yeah, you can't you know? win by cheating no blow. anymore. Oh hey, we're looking at replay. See if he did. Well, of course he did. That's why the crowd is booing. I mean, he, the yeah. referee missed it. You know. Mm-hmm. What I mean? So you know. But I was like, man, you're right. They're gonna heel. probably ignore it. And like people are like, it's the replay. Like what? Yeah. No instant replay. Yeah. So, you know, um, I liked the idea of having of how they came to the throwing in the towel. Yeah. I like that. You know, Ricardo's sitting there is like, dude, I can't I can't watch my friend get hurt anymore. Do you want me to throw the towel? Ricardo's standing there like, No, don't do it, don't do it. And then Ricardo ends up getting attacked and the referee just sees the th- towel coming in, but it's Zeb Coulter throwing right. the towel. Right. You know, I like that. I enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah. As soon as I saw the uh the second referee come out, and he's like, no, no, no. He didn't throw the towel. He threw in the towel. Uh, you know, I was like, oh, oh man, where are they going with this? And then yeah, it was like, oh, let's do instant <laughs> replay that we've <laughs> never done before. I'm like, really? Like, is this a challenge now? Magic, or? Yeah, he's mad. got two challenge flags <laughs> yeah, to throw you, out there. You get one challenge flag per match every 10 minutes and yeah. af- after each hey, additional five. Next <laughs> time I'm at a Raw event and something happens like that and I'm in the front row, I'm going to scream out instant replay. <laughs> right? And, uh, and you know, it's like like Tyler said, it's it's the WWE. It, they live in their own little world, yeah. so it's not going to affect every single match because it didn't. Uh, it even, you know, even on, uh, what was it, Raw, I think, something happened where they could have used instant replay yeah. and they didn't use it. So I think it's just like a one-time deal. <laughs> I feel it's kind of a cop out, but it's you know. Um, it was I quit match, so. yeah, it's an I quit match, so we have to, you know, sort of tease the fans. But they say, yeah. you know, if Del Rio can continue, then the match will. And sure enough, they they did, and you know, Del Rio gets the gets the victory. So he becomes the new number one contender. What was it, Del Rio? Ah, ah. <laughs> so uh, so I, yeah, don't really have any problems with Del Rio being the number one contender. So. Uh, you know, it's curious to see where they're going to go with uh, with Jack Swagger now. Uh, but next up, we got to see the tag team match uh, between Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns going up against Team Hell No in a Texas Tornado match, which I haven't seen one of these in a while. Yes. Um, all four combatants are in the ring at the same time, just going at it first to get pinfall or submission. They weren't even t- in Texas. And they weren't they're even in Texas. Texas. That's what makes it great. Um, love this match. Yeah. Um, you know, both... Both parties did their job to a T. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was just a lot of good action in this matchup. It was just fun. Yeah, it was fun to watch. Um, you know, what, what did what did y'all think? Other than it was fun, Brian was going off, man. Yeah, <laughs> he hitting them spots like it ain't nothing. <laughs> I was like, man. 
But like I said, when the system had the lag, you know, you, you hear the crash first, then yeah. you see it. So that's what kind of like, uh, it yeah. really sets it off. Yeah, you know, so you hear like, oh, and then you see it happens like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, it kind of <laughs> took it out just a little bit, certain certain moments, yeah, the lag. But I mean, sort of like the uh, the Royal Rumble. Yes, we had to deal with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was same thing, but it was also different. At the same yeah, time. but I, uh, I mean, it was highly enjoyable for me and stuff, and it's just that. <laughs> I mean, I always see. I love seeing the shield, like how Roman Reigns and uh, Rollins, you know, they're different styles, just like Kane and Daniel Bryan. But mm-hmm. the chemistry go well with each other. Yeah, yeah. Kind of complement. They just they other. gel. Yeah. yeah so. Like you I said, the power yeah. and speed. You know, you got that. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, Roman Reigns is, you know, I know when he first came along, I was iffy on him, but like we said last week, you know, have that. Him with Ambrose and yeah. Rollins, you know they, it, they help him, you know. And stuff, yeah, they and help so bring him up. Yeah, and they can help teach him and stuff like leaky. that. And, uh, yeah, or Liaki or I like saying leaky. Uh, leaky. 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 Um, leaky, leaky. Yeah, you know this. Uh, this is a good uh, big man, fast man duo, which mm-hmm. you know is the exact same as uh, Team Hell No. It's big man and uh, and fast man. Um, but uh, on this night. Uh, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns were victorious, become the new tag team champs. So, you know, I, to my knowledge, or me thinking, like uh, Rollins is the only one who does that. He jumps off the rope and hits you with his knee, hmm. or whatever, like that. Yeah. It's like you don't see too many. Well, in WWE, who does that all the time, mm-hmm. right? Is his knee he hits him with? Yeah, it's like the knee. Yeah, he mm-hmm. came with it. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's grown on me. At first, I was like, eh. But I think I'm starting to like him. Moving yeah, more. and Roman Reigns w- hitting the spear, it, it's always looked good. Yeah. Every time that he's done it, um, you know, I always had like a, always kind of had a problem to Edge doing it. You compared all the other spears. I mean, like you this. look at you look at the people who have done it, like Goldberg. Like his spears were monstrous. His was rhinos. Rhinos, rhinos was monstrous. gory. I don't like, I don't like yeah. Big Show. So, oh, <laughs> gory. Yeah. Okay, but uh, I don't like Big Shows. Yeah, no. Big Show's a little Ugh. too much. Yeah. Um, where it's like... <laughs> Caitlyn. <laughs> Caitlyn's is okay, because she's muscular at least. But, like, you know, I looked at Edges, and I was, I never really bought it a whole lot. Like, unless he's hitting someone who's smaller than him. Right. Because he's got that tall and lean mm-hmm. uh, physique. Whereas, you know, like, Roman Reigns has that muscular built. You know, his shoulders have that extra girth on it. To, to be able to go through Take somebody something. out, yeah. I just, like, I know this is bad, but I'm like, I shouldn't do this. At times I compare, like, all spirits to Goldberg's because his was just vicious, and how he just flies at you. Yeah. And yeah. all that stuff. And, like, because a lot of people, it looks like they land, like, on their knees, and Goldberg just, like, flies, like. Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah, he's literally spearing, like, it's mighty. Yeah, spear, so. Yeah. It's like you're about to hit the ground, and it's going to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the cause of this pain. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, so Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, uh, defeat Team Hell No to become tag team champions, leading the uh, the era of justice. Believe in yes. the shield? I do believe in the they shield. They all get in the ring and pose. Yes. Gold. Causing the internet to blow up <laughs> their pants. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, next up, we got to see uh, Randy Orton going up against the big show in an extreme rules match. Uh, I was telling the joke that we always say, I was like, I was telling Debra, I was like, you know how you can tell Randy Orton's a face or heel, right? And it was like, if he's a face, he will find a kendo stick. Mm-hmm. If but he's a heel, he brings one. That's right. And what happens? He finds one. two kendo sticks. <laughs> and, and he breaks. <laughs> See how his joke's just like, he's. It's, it's like he's working on it, and then it's just like, nope, that's the end. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. Aww. Oh. Okay. Seriously. But uh but yeah, so uh, you know this match was uh it was okay. I think oh, it was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a real good match. They uh, put on a pretty good show. Yeah, uh, I mean they they were crowd was obviously hyped up. Yeah. The crowd loved Randy Orton. I mean, I'm like mm-hmm. I I can see what like over the years he's been getting stale and it was like the crowd of like he just brandy like, you know, every time you come out you hear that crowd just be screaming at him like Oh my god, it's Randy Orton. Yeah. <laughs> I just think I, I didn't just I think me, it was all in my head. I just didn't care for the match. Mm-hmm. 
I'm just thinking the whole time, I was like, I really just don't want to see this match. That's what the whole time. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll give it to him. Like, the crowd. Yeah, they put on a good strangely, match. Strangely, like, loves, like, Randy Orton. Yeah. And I like the, uh, hey, let's put the ladder on the two chairs and put Orton on yeah, it and he... try and put him through it. And Orton ends up moving it out of the way. Um, I liked the fact that, that Orton used the punt. Yeah. Because, but... you know, people and people were got up in arms about it. They're like, wait a minute. I thought this was banned. However, it's extreme rules Rule match. match yeah. Anything can go. So this is the one time where he can get away with it. And he does it much to the delight of the fans. Uh, um, and picks up the victory on it. Skull. One thing Doug said was... Uh, Kick you he, in the skull. He said Ready. to Dave, it was like... Um, he was like, people are getting this mixed up because Big Show is the face and Randy Orton is the heel. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like this since WrestleMania, I'm telling you. But, uh, but yeah, so Orton ends up picking he, the victory. Uh, he does that point. I was like, what a heelish thing to do. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like, God, this guy's such a jerk. <laughs> But uh, but no, but Orton ends up getting the victory, much to the delight of the fans. Um, Not sure what's next for Orton. We're not sure what's next for Big Show, but we'll have to see. But next up, we got to see the WWE Championship on the line. Cena versus Ryback in a last man standing match. And um, I don't know how I feel about this one. Uh, It was a good showing for Ryback, pretty good showing for Cena. Uh, The ending is a cop out. Yeah. Um, so they can have another match at the next paper. The uh, yeah, obviously, yeah. The the three foot fall from Cena yeah. onto Ryback was not as devastating as Mick Foley falling off the tw- the twenty foot tall hell in a cell. Did someone right. through the table. Jerry the King Lawler compared that. Oh my god, no. He did. What? He said, "Man, that's a devastating fall." And yeah, it's almost devastating as Mick Foley. No, there's no way. I mean, no. when that happened. You literally heard Jim Ross say, oh, my God, he's broken in half. They yeah. killed him. They killed him. Someone like, stop the damn Yeah, you know match. what I'm saying? And you just got the Undertaker. He was looking like. Yeah. I now, did. we didn't see the expressions when he went through the sign, but it's like, <laughs> there's no way. Our, our vision didn't see with them going through. There was a camera back there seeing how they land. Maybe, I think, like, it was all, like, couture on, like, some metal or whatever. Right? Like, you know, it's like, it, it just so stays. Like, that was, I mean, you just can't compare the yeah. two. Not man. to mention. The the part where they go through the they go through the light screen, obviously. Yeah. Okay, people are claiming, oh, that was. F- These are actual comments. People were saying this was, this was not scripted. This was not planned. Okay, is that why the pyro, pyro. on the outside where they didn't even touch was not going was sparking and all that? <laughs> no. You know, I'm 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 sorry, but I'm sure lights you know go out when stuff like that happens. Not to mention they gave them plenty of time to. Remove the padding, which yeah. where they were landed, that looks like a nice little padded area yeah. that they could have just removed, and mm-hmm. they had iron support. Right, right. You know, but um, that, but what what I was referring to the the three foot drop was uh when they battled through the through the fans and they got over to where the um the pyro stage or the sound stage oh, is, yeah. and, oh, uh, and they the... and they set up the thing oh, yeah. and yeah. he climbs up and like does a body slam. Yeah. I'm like. We, we laughed at that. That was kind of lackluster. I didn't remember Girl, him pi- saying that. You said something about, like, how Jeff Hardy, like, oh, they're going to try to compare to Jeff Hardy. Like, oh, oh, yes. Like, or Kofi's even leg drop, you know. Yeah, when he I was thinking Jordan. that, too. It's like, it's like, it was like, it was so close. It's like. I want a side-by-side side comparison, like, PG falling. Or, no, I'm sorry, uh, you know, yeah, can- Attitude or TG, T, uh, TV 14 falling. Yeah. Show Jeff Hardy at the top of that 30-foot scale. Yeah, dude, yeah. Jumping yeah. off, you Randy know. Orton, yeah. And then, now let's do a PG drop. John Cena, like four feet in the air. Oh my <laughs> God, that's no! crazy! Yeah, it's so the table. It's like okay, him because I don't remember him saying that, but that's that's the WWE universe. That's an yeah. alternate universe where mm. I've never seen anything say like stuff. this before. They're gonna compare it to crazier things, and they're also going to you know just because it's John Cena, yeah. the Golden Boy. You know, well, oh. I mean, not not saying he's the Golden Boy. I'm just saying yeah, they the make. Boy. Say what Outlandish you want. Outlandish comparisons. Doug's not here. You don't have to do that. It's okay. No. He's the golden boy. <laughs> He's the super saiyan of the WWE. <laughs> I'm not ba- It's okay. Hey, I'm not bashing on John Cena. It's okay. You can this week. I don't want to. Okay. Well, I'm just saying. If there was a time, this would be it. The guy at the bowling alley was really just dogging him. <laughs> like bad. Really? Yeah. He was like, 
John Cena so, you know, he's the same dude who always oh, says yeah. what's that Michael Michael yeah he it's just so going, funny oh man cause I was I was trying to I was trying to get his attention he was like John Cena sucks I was like this dude you see that guy you can't see him I was doing this in front of my face and he's like man <laughs> But, um, but, yeah, the match ends up being a no contest, which I get because you don't want to take the title off Cena mm -hmm. a month after he wins it. You don't want to give the title to Ryback, you know, because um, you're still unsure. Right. But you also, <laughs> I'm definitely unsure for Ryback. But, you're, but you also don't want to lose any heat that he's got, you know. So you have the match ended in a, in a, in a draw, which has happened before. Yeah. Um, so I just to those who are like, well, they should have still counted. Well, you know, it's not the first time it's happened. I just feel like. Yeah, like, you know, like, I think Charles Robertson had a post, you know, I was worried about the, you know, the safety yeah. of, uh, you know, the guys instead of me counting. But I don't think you should show Ryback get, uh, getting up, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, he, he literally helped him up, you know. And, and then he walks off. Off, you know what I'm saying? That makes him <laughs> the champion. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, they, they stop the count, can understand that, but he walks off. I mean, if yeah. you, if you're gonna If you're going to do that, have, have Robinson do count to 10, double count out, double draw right. or whatever. And that'd be the end of it. Like that would have been a better a better choice. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you had a seven, eight, nine, ten, ring the bell, no winner, you yeah. know, no contest, draw, you know, and then see Ryback get up and walk away. Yeah. That would have made a lot more sense. And that would have made that would have given even more momentum for the upcoming pay per view for him to say, Hey man, I might not have made the count, but I was the first to get up. Yeah. You know. Um, you gotta, well, I didn't get hauled <laughs> off in the stretcher, so um, you know, what with him you, getting off the stretcher like later on and recording, oh, it's like man, my, ne my neck is in <laughs> back is okay now. <laughs> just, just kind of. Uh, you know, for those who did not watch like the YouTube post show, <laughs> you really need to before you comment about Cena being okay or Cena being injured, because during the post show. They show a video of them wheeling John Cena to the ambulance. Mm -hmm. They even showed it on Raw where he sits up, removes the neck brace going, look, man, I've had these injuries before. I'm okay. I'm good to go. Stands up and proceeds to walk back to the locker room. Okay? So. <laughs> Here it goes. It's No, it's just they're misleading. The WWE is misleading their fans. Okay, because they posted after the post show, they posted a picture of him on a stretcher in a neck brace going, what's the status of John Cena? Yeah. Is he going to be okay? This is leading people to believe he is in serious condition. Okay, like he is seriously messed up. When we saw five yeah. seconds after that picture was taken, <laughs> him getting up and walking away. Yeah. Daniel got in, he put a uh, comment on <laughs> yeah. WWE.com. Yeah. Uh, the it's Facebook astounding. Yeah, and then he got into it with some uh, quite some proud people. Of yes, and which was good. I, I, how, well, I, how many? 135 comments. 100, 130 <laughs> likes, likes and yeah. like 38 comments. Yeah. And I'd like to say a special thanks to Wife Swap and to Seth Rickson. Believe it or not, Seth Rickson <laughs> uh, for backing me up on this. Well, Seth Rickson didn't really back me up. He was asking, "Where is my Rise Above Stretcher T-shirt?" <laughs> but he was with you though. But he, he was, was with me on yeah. that one. Damn it. So. <laughs> Props to you guys for joining in. Thomas Lowson as well. I uh, saw his uh, like on there. So <laughs> I just I don't like the fact that they're being misleading to to people. I think yeah. it's and they did it later on after Raw as well. Mm -hmm. But I just want to say Daniel one Internet zero. Thank you. There you go. I appreciate. I'll take that. <laughs> Suck it, Internet. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's fine if you want to believe the scene is still injured and stuff like that. That's totally fine. But don't Little try to talk to me about kayfabe, dude. <laughs> like, Little kids try to talk to you about kayfabe. And, you know, I mean, he's probably like just out of high school or something. So. I know what I'm talking about. I've been watching wrestling since 2005. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> what was, what was your favorite match? Uh, Alicia Fox versus Molina. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, that was a good match. <laughs> You don't even know, dude. You don't even know. Uh, but, yeah, dude, like, it's just I love the fact that people on the Internet get so angry so easily. Yeah. Like, get butt hurt. Someone told me, like, you don't know what you're talking about. You need to shut your mouth. You need to, I'm like. I'm going to come over or, to your, yeah. your house and kick your butt. Like, I'll beat you up in real life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like, if you're, if you're going to verbally attack someone 
on the internet. Please use proper spelling, proper grammar, you know, good punctuation, uh, no and have a reason for doing it, yeah. you know, or give a reason for doing it. Just, just don't just be like, "Shut up, you're stupid." I win, you know that. That's you suck you because it anything. was, you know, in wrestling, and I know everything about it, so suck it. Yeah. I'm like, what? Okay. If you don't like John Cena, I got two words for you. I'm right. <laughs> you know, I don't. <laughs> My opinion? Yeah. There's two words for it. No. Um, but no, I don't want to get into like a deep debate over, you know, over the internet fans. You know, people comment on what they want. Yeah. You know? yeah I mean, it's, it's just, it it, that's how it is. I'm, I'm glad that our listeners, you know, have the intellect to understand the goings on of what's happening backstage. Yeah, we got a lot of listeners also who give their opinions. Yeah, yeah. and we love that too. You know, I mean, if, if there, you, it's, you know, there's times they're not the same as ours, right. but yeah. we love it because they explain it. Yes, if you if you disagree with us, we've said it time and time again. We're yeah. going to continue to say it for however long we do this show. You know, if you disagree with us, great, that's totally that's even fine. Better. Yeah, you, you know, know. Uh, but. Explain yourself, right. you know, give you reasons. Let's, you know, we like to do that. Like I said, I don't, I didn't just go on and say, Oh, why don't you, you know, why don't you show where your scene is perfectly fine? And that'd be the end of it. I provided proof, I provided evidence. I said, Here's the reason, and I don't like them misleading us. This right. is why I have an issue with this, you know. And people still like, you know, you, you join, you join a conversation thread. But you don't read the conversation, and people are asking me five or six times, <laughs> hey, man, where's this proof that you say you have? I'm like, you're clearly not reading the comments. You clearly didn't watch the post show. So I don't know what you're thinking, but it's just all kind of crazy. Everybody watch the pre and post show so you know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, it's just, is it really that hard to believe that Cena got up afterwards? Like, I really want to comment all the people who messaged me telling me I don't know what I'm talking about who watched Raw the very next night, watched them show that clip, and be like, what do you think now? How stupid am I now? They're not going to respond. They're not going to. Of course not. Why would they? Just He was right. Man, man whatever. You don't know what you're talking about, even though you provided factual evidence and screenshots <laughs> and links to the screenshot. and <laughs> Over and over again. Uh, still shut up. <laughs> and then... And what cracked me up is that one of the guy was like 35 years old, and he was the one who who was like, "You need to you need to shut your mouth. You don't know jack shit about it. You need to shut the fuck up." Come on, son, you want to go? Let's fight. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you live in California and work at a car dealership. I'll just call the car dealership, tell me tell them you were giving me a harassing time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was there the other day, <laughs> and this guy is just giving me all kinds of crap and just telling me I don't know I don't know jack shit about cars. So. And, uh, he was coming on to my wife. Yeah. So <laughs> don't do that, folks. Please don't do that. <laughs> we need to specify. We're only, this is only in our heads. Don't do that. Don't actually do that. You might get someone fired. Today, California man gets beat up at the local car lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you want to mess with Danny of the uh, podcast, huh? Break Boom. yourself, fool. <laughs> Give them digits. So, uh, uh, where were we? Ah, oh, yes. Final match in the Brock Lesnar. Uh, going up against Triple H in a steel cage match. Um, much like WrestleMania, didn't want to see this match. Yeah. But once again, Paul Heyman sells it to you. So you're like, all right, well, how can how bad can it be? Um, go ahead. <laughs> I didn't want to see it at all. I ain't going to lie. The, yeah. the WrestleMania match, I did want to see. But just because I know just to blow it off, when I seen this, it's like, eh, steel cage match, eh. Well, steel like cage said, match in the course of history has been known to be the end all to be all end all of right, the feud. like yeah. this is it this is the end yay no more so and i like that they revamped the cage because now you don't have that annoying bar Hard right make, in the yeah. center it's like they moved it and you now you have two and you have a viewing window now mm -hmm. which is good i like that but go ahead what do you think about the matchup uh most of it was I, I thought it was decent i mean it was nothing i didn't expect out them guys you know the whole Silver, uh, I guess the blend in with the, <laughs> the spray painted sledgehammer. Yeah, you know, uh, it blends in. Yeah, it yeah, just you know, it, it. I don't know, man. What to say? It is. It was okay. It wasn't. I wouldn't say the rest of man match was better, or it, I think it was better than this one. I mean, I guess the the, the cage match added more element to it, but mm -hmm. it just seemed like a normal cage match to me. It. 
Yeah. I wasn't expecting blood, but it just seemed like, you know, if these two will really go at it, this is Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. Somebody three. got, you know, yeah, three or somebody got to get, you know, busted something. You know, this two, an MMA guy who's fighting, you know, versus mm-hmm. like a top known wrestling guy and it's like no who's type known of, to fight inside of a cage. And I'm not mm. all for the blood, you know what I'm saying? But if you're in a state of cage match and you got these guys and you bring a sledgehammer to the match and it's like. Uh, yeah. You know, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, so. I like that this is a little small point, and he done this uh, maybe it's the raw before the two raws, but like Lesnar just like did the same thing and got him and just like, su- uh, what was it belly to back suplex mm-hmm. him and just like it was nothing Threw him around just like, like it was nothing, nothing. And, like Triple H is I mean it's still a big guy yeah, yeah he's like two fifty two sixty it's like hey check us out oh nothing <laughs> yeah like, it's like he threw Ray really... Mysterio yeah. around <laughs> <laughs> you know and. Uh, you know, like like Ryan said, the match was okay. Um, I I was questioning uh, the severity of Lesnar's knee injury. Yeah, because you know he played it off really well, but he kept going to Paul too much, and so I'm like, okay, they're obviously using this to have Triple H get the mm-hmm. advantage, which brought me back. You know, if you if you follow our Facebook page, WNS Podcast, you saw my comments. You know, Summer Sam, Summer Slam last year. It was uh, Triple H's arm, yeah. and like Brock Lesnar's stomach. In this, in WrestleMania, it was Lesnar's arm mm-hmm. and Triple H's arm, and then in this one, it's Triple H's or same formula. Yeah, they they they, they use something it, yeah. for some freak accident to cause Lesnar to get injured on some body part of his, yeah. and that's where Triple H gets gets the advantage. Um, but I did like him, like Lesnar. I don't enjoy him like I know he's he's in pain or whatever. But I did like you can hear him like, <gasps> yeah, yeah. You know? um, he sold it well. One issue I did have with the match was the sledgehammer, you know, because it's spray painted. Mm-hmm. It's he it was premeditated. He put that there. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, in in the event that he can't put Lesnar down, this is a perfect opportunity for. You know, JBL to be a heel commentator. Yeah. To say he couldn't get the job done. He knew that he couldn't get the job done. So he's bringing in a sledgehammer into this matchup. Yeah. You know, or the great equalizer, right. as, <laughs> as, you know, they'll they'll call it from time to time, you know, because, you know, obviously Paul Heyman got involved. He, he, he yeah. brought a chair into the event as well. Um, but, you know, I, I, I had an issue. I just, it's a small issue. It's, I'm not going to gripe too much about it. Um, but it just it irked me the wrong way, uh, and I felt like if they would have played it off like, you know, Triple H knows that he can't get the job done, yeah. So he's using a sledgehammer. I think if they would have gone that route, I would have bought into it a little bit more, right? Um, but Lesnar ended up getting it, getting the sledgehammer, using it against Triple H. This will set up for Lesnar versus no! Triple H four. No more. Best we don't out need of five. More. We don't need any more. No In more. In the best out of five. No holes bar. Steel cage <laughs> over the top rope <laughs> challenge slam. Get check your ego at the door. Yeah. You know, it's just I can still beat Lesnar. So, uh, so Lesnar used the sledgehammer on Triple H, gets the pin, puts the sledgehammer on his chest, crosses his arms. It's significant. It's a, Game is over. So, uh, I don't know. Um, the pay per view in itself had had some good qualities. Yeah. Had good. Yeah. Had some yeah. good ups. Had some okays. Had some not so greats. Um, you know, check it out if if you want to. If you you know if you just want to see uh, the check shield. Buy shield the DVD be when it comes out. I'll d- end up doing it. <laughs> yeah, I'll say do. Daniel's so, gonna get it. It's just, you know inevitable. I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> What's the next <laughs> WWE uh, uh, DVD coming out? I don't know. I'm getting it. And probably in about a month. Yeah. Uh, so get the Kofi Kingston DVD. I get no, it. Not gonna do it. So there you go. <laughs> so that's how we closed out Extreme Rules, which takes us right into Raw, starting off with an ambulance coming to the ring and ends up being Ryback saying, you know, there was no winner, which means that I was not the loser. Um, so I'm here challenging Cena to an ambulance match mm-hmm. at WWE Payback in four weeks. Which I like the fact that they're already building towards the next pay per view, so it's good on that part. Ryback, best promo he's ever cut so he's far. He's getting good at it. He's man. getting better. Um, you know, I I feel like the thing that was troubling for him was that when he first came in as Ryback, he would have these poems or this philosophy yeah. stuff that he had to quote. You know, that's that's hard to memorize after you go and wrestle a match and then. 
you have to say it in front of like fifteen or sixteen thousand people. Yeah. You know, if he just comes out and says, "Look, you're all dead to me. All right, I don't care about y'all. Um, we're gonna. I'm taking him to the na- to the nearest ambulance, maybe even the morgue. <laughs> hey, y'all can go with him if you want. I don't care. You know. So for him to come out with that kind of attitude, uh, I dug it. I thought it was the best promo he's done since coming back to the WWE as Ryback, um, maybe in his whole time in WWE. So, uh, so yeah. I'm, I, don't know, I feel like right now I'm not into Ryback that much. It's because he's not as hungry as you are anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he let down the fans. He's not eating as much. No. Um, it, I just don't know if it's his promos or the way he dresses and – I know he does look vicious at times with that clothesline and all that stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's good, but it's just that something just takes me out. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. He need to be more healish. I think he like need to attack somebody backstage, like do some serious damage to somebody. You know, and just like, I'm just going like on just, a rampage. You know, just attack anybody who it is because like, it's, yeah, it's just his he's heel. a monster, but it's like he just a monster in the ring and that's it. Like you don't see him like doing too much besides whatever in the ring. You know, doing something mm-hmm. that's. Not in the ring, off stage. Or it just feels like I, I guess I can't quite pinpoint it, but something's holding me back. You know, mm-hmm. just it's like I don't know. Okay, but yeah, but other than that, like like I said, I thought the the promo was pretty good, which takes us into our first match. We got to see uh, Jericho and the Miz going up against uh, Wade Barrett and Fandango, and uh, you know there were tensions between Fandango and Barrett. Um, this this match really put focus on Fandango. Yeah. Uh, as as he jumped off the the apron, just started dancing. And you could see during the match that there was tension between Barrett and Fandango. Yeah, so uh, so Fandango starts dancing and ends up costing Barrett the matchup as he gets pinned. He, his music played during the whole match. Yeah, they were just dancing like the the match was going on. Fandango's mm-hmm. music was playing, mm-hmm. and even after. They got the win, uh, Jericho wow. and the Miz. It was still playing. Yeah, instead dancing. of playing the Miz's music, they're yeah. still playing Fandango's. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Jericho and Miz decide to go after Fandango, and Fandango runs away. Uh, Jericho decides to dance with Summer Rae and gets right up in her face, getting ready. He gives her tongue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, he does not. No, he does not. <laughs> instead, he gives her the yeah, PG. talk to the hand, walks away. Jared Troll strikes again. So I like Summer. Rae. I've never seen her wrestle, but she's pretty. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good to look at. All right. So um, I can't. So, <laughs> so next up, <laughs> next up, we got to see uh, Dana Bryan backstage, and you know he's absolutely furious about losing the tag te- tag team titles. You know, I gotta say I love Daniel Bryan on this Raw. Yeah, I mean I'll was... get him more whenever we get to their match, but mm-hmm. yeah, I I loved him. He did he did a great job. You know he made sure the focus was. Him being frustrated about losing the the belts and doing what he can. I'm not, I'm not the tag team champions them. anymore. You're, You're not, not the tag champions. team champions. We are not the tag team <laughs> champions. <laughs> the Shield is the tag team champions. I am not the weak link. Um, and that that one phrase, "I am not the weak link," that leads me to believe that a split is inevitably going to come with him trying to prove himself being the better person, and in doing so, turning himself into a heel, you know, attacking Kane, you know, I'm not the weak link. I'm not the weak one. No. Um, Kane's headed. No. Yeah. No. <clears throat> so, um, so, you know, he's furious backstage and, uh, you know, they announced that they have a match later on that night. So, um, but next up we got to see, uh, Sheamus going up against Titus O'Neil. And the reason for this match was because, uh, during the post show, Titus O'Neil made a comment ba- to Sheamus. Jump back into character in the post show. Yeah. Uh, Titus O'Neil made the comment that, you know, um, Mark Henry couldn't get the job done, but he could. Uh, he's like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take him to town if I need to. So this this prompted the uh, Love the Sheamus versus Titus match, which I like. I like the fact that they're using the post show for a reason. Yeah. It's like we're going to show this content that you're not going to believe on our Facebook page. Um <laughs> And then we're going to have a build for a reason for these two to be in a matchup. Uh, I thought Titus uh, did a great job, held his own. Uh, didn't They didn't make him look weak. I didn't get to see this. Um, yeah. Drop yeah, but, the F-bomb. But the, uh, but the match I thought was pretty good. Uh, and But Sheamus ends up getting the victory, as most people would expect. Um, Darren out there? Yeah, Darren was out there. Um, but Titus was uh, not victorious. 
So um, they didn't get to have celebrate millions of dollars. Uh, but next up, we got to see Paul Heyman come out and introduce the next Paul Heyman guy, which was uh, highly speculated to be Rob Van Dam. But which they're that. trying to throw people off and like, I mean, I don't think I know it all, but I, I really felt like it. it's not Rob Van Dam. Yeah, yeah you, you kind of had a feeling, you know, it would be nice to see Rob Van Dam. You know, there are people like Rob Van Dam, yeah. Oh, they got him trending an hour before mm-hmm. uh, before Raw even started because I there bet was they're like, ha, ha, about we got those people. Yeah. yeah, much like they did with The Rock being the host of uh, of WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Uh, that people were saying, "Oh, it's going to be Justin Bieber." <laughs> no, I really, you know, it's. I really thought it was going to be someone from NXT they picked, but well, first of all, let me just go back. Sorry, because Heyman came out and was talking about Triple H first, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all that stuff, and then he then he went into you know the next guy and all that stuff. But I thought it'd be someone from NXT, but it was someone you know good to bring back that was on TV yeah. and who does house shows and stuff and. To good to reestablish him and mm-hmm. and to have Heyman by his side and all that stuff, but it was Michael McGillicuddy, formerly Michael McGillicuddy, formerly Michael McGillicuddy, um, Curtis Axel. Yes, but didn't I see or didn't I see that when he came out, it said Kurt Axel. It did say Kurt Axel. Um, I mean, that could be just the way that the uh, the screen curves because I know the screen does curve mm-hmm. a certain way. Uh, but it could have just been a typo as well. Curtis, I Axel. loved the fact that they at least explained the name. The name yeah, because yes. everyone's coming out and they're like, "Dude, that's Michael McGillicuddy yeah. or Joe Hennig." You know, they came out and said, "This is the son of Mister Perfect, Kurt Henning. Mm-hmm. This is the grandson of the Axe." Yeah, yeah. You know, so we have given him this name to create his own future, uh, Curtis Axel. Um, which I dig. I get it. Um, but how much better would have been Axel Hennig? Yeah. You know, like, yeah, you know, you could have, you could have done that. And but Axel's uh, more of a first name, not a last yeah, name. Yeah. Axel, you know, Axel mm-hmm. Foley. <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, it, it'll eventually stick. Yeah. And, yeah. And it's fine. Um, so, you know, it's good that, that, you know, he's going to have a mouthpiece being Paul Heyman. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but he got the, the talent. But yeah. The, but the biggest problem that hmm. we had for this night. Triple H. Triple H coming out, instantly burying this well, kid. No. Okay, there's no, parts. No, no, let me just say, no. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let go ahead. Just because there was, well, I mean, you are technically correct because he was about to say something and cuts him off, but I did like his intensity whenever he got, when Triple H first got, he said he's going to beat up Heyman, and then um, Axel got in his face and he's like, you know, this is, there's a new, how do you say it? There's a new, there's an, the, the game, game has changed. changed, but he, he looked like, you know, you know how he mm-hmm. said everything and like his presence and I don't know how to explain it. Um, the intensity. Yeah. But then that one shoved, and I was like, that was it. And, that, and that's all that it took. Triple H comes out and says, Hey, Hey there, kid. The grown-ups yeah. are talking now. Why don't you take a step back? cuts him off because he was about to talk, say something. He mm-hmm. cuts him off. And, uh, it's like, really? This is how you're going to do it? Don't yeah. put him against Triple H. Come on now. And so, like you said. Hold on there, Junior. You know, <laughs> Axel, Axel got back in his face and said, hey, man, you want to talk to this guy? You got to talk to me. Yeah. Uh, you know, the game's changed. I like that. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, this is their chance to, mm-hmm. to redeem what they've just ruined. Yeah. And what does he do? Just slaps him in the face and, oh, <laughs> let me go get my gear. We're going to have a match. That's it. And that's it. Which I think Axel should have got up and they should have started What fighting. they should have done is the second Triple H cuts him off, says, hey, the adults are talking, Axel just goes ballistic. Yeah. yeah. And just beats the ever-loving hell out of them. You know, I, Triple H. I knew when Triple H came out, I was like, oh. Here comes, where's his shovel? Mm-hmm. Really? That's like don't you do should have called the Undertaker. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like WWE wise, I think what comes to my head, like a Paul Heyman guy, like the only non successful Paul Heyman guy in my head was Heidenreich. Or Big Show. Yeah, okay. Well he had a group. He had Yeah. Well, okay. That's true. He's had a few guys. He has but... there's a group he after that he put like yeah. um totally 
Lincoln. On Nathan Jones. Nathan, oh, Nathan wow. Jones was, yeah. It was Nathan <laughs> yeah. Jones, Hyde and Reich. It was like Big A-train. Show, A-Train. A-train. Yeah. It's like. So he's had a few guys. Yeah. You know, and Some obviously. Some are hit and miss. Yeah. H O uh, Nathan Jones like they won WrestleMania that was it he couldn't he didn't like the schedule. <laughs> I don't think Nathan Jones was that good. He even missed it. He even missed like eighteen out of the twenty minutes of that match. So. Yeah. But it's just that oh, I want to say McGillicuddy. Um, Axel he has the potential. He's good. I yeah. I like him and stuff. Just let him go. Don't let him go against Triple H, please. This don't. moment, right now, the moment that's happening right now. This moment the genesis. is the genesis of, of McGillicuddy. McGillicuddy. No. Uh, <laughs> so that's why it's good for I, mean, I don't Paul know Heyman where they're going with it and all that stuff, but maybe they It can. was just one of those things where I'm like, this is their chance to make or break him, and they completely, not only did they break him, you they shattered it. him, they pulverized him into dust, and they went, all right, good luck, Paul. Let's see what we can do with this guy. Yeah, let's see what you can do now. It's like, motherfucker. Yeah. Damn. Like, as soon as we get a chance, we're going to. when he came out, I was like, good, good. He's back on TV. They're going to do something with yeah. him. Yes. <laughs> no. Because I did like him. Yeah. I do like him. I do like him. So, but we'll talk a little bit more about yeah. Curtis Axel in a moment. Uh, but next up, we got to see Big E Langston going up against Alberto Del Rio. Um, I got to say, uh, Big E Langston's definitely growing on me. Yeah. Uh, he's he's impressive in the ring. Um He's a powerhouse, um, and I don't know why, but I always get like a small chuckle when he comes out during his intro or during his entrance, and uh, he's clapping with Uh-oh. the uh, with the power. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why, but I just get a chuckle just because like he's it. I don't know. It's like you know that's what power uh, power does do. You know, right before yeah. they go and they chalk up and they just get themselves hyped up. Yeah, but I don't. I don't know why. Maybe it's just his facial reaction or something. <laughs> yeah, <he's> like, <laughs> Are you a seal dude? I don't. I don't, I don't know. Fish. But I get. I get a. I get a chuckle out of it when yeah. I see it. So it makes it more enjoyable, at least. <laughs> but <laughs> but, uh, but now yeah. when he comes out, I'm gonna look at you. Like, <laughs> so I don't know. I'm just being immature, I guess. <laughs> hey, but, uh, aren't we all? But yeah. So Big E Langston looking impressive going up against Del Rio. Uh, picks up the victory after uh, after an eye rake, which could have been used in instant replay. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's the moment that I that I knew. I knew I was going to remember it. I'm glad I did. That's the moment they could have used instant replay. Had another ref, and I was waiting for it, but it never happened. So once again, yeah, hey. proving WWE lives in their own universe, alternate own universe. That pay per view is an alternate universe, <laughs> different storyline. No one, you know, yeah. So there you go. WrestleMania log 107. <laughs> 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 Smackdown, Stargate, <laughs> 2903-7 HQ, Velour, <laughs> Kiff. So uh, <laughs> next up we got to see uh, AJ going up against Layla um, as they as AJ prepares for her eventual that, matchup. That wasn't that long of a match. No, it wasn't. I mean, it's a, it's a defense match. Yeah. But what they're doing is that they're having AJ going up against past diva champions, trying to make her look strong, looking her, making her look strong, mm-hmm. loving the, uh, the the submission move, which I think they're calling the widow, black widow, or something okay. now. Uh, but I think Doug said it was the octopus stretch or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it is. But still, absolutely love it. Love the fact that uh, Layla was tapping the ass in order to tap out, yeah. tapping that ass. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> They they put on uh, what was it on Twitter? They have the feed that goes underneath the or it's on the screen. Mm. Yeah, you know, people post and they're like, I think one guy puts like she can put or she can put me in that stretch and make me tap out anytime. <laughs> <laughs> they put that on there. <laughs> That's awesome. We need to try and get something. Like that on there. <laughs> but first we'd have to use Twitter. Um, <laughs> we were on. We were. You got your Twitter thing on uh, the house show. I did. Cause you are. Barking at me to do it. I get on Twitter. Come on. You could have done it. Weep. Nope. I don't get on Twitter. Oh, you could have done it, though. I could, I could have yelled at you. <laughs> but, ah! uh, but next up, we got to see uh, Cody Rhodes going up against Zack Ryder. Um, this is kind of a short match. Uh, I feel really bad about these two guys because they go to commercial and they come back and the match has already started. Not only did they completely <laughs> skip their intros, but they skipped the start of the match as well. So... 
you know, it's like, what's what's the point in? I can in understand this? doing the Zack Ryder, but like Cody Rhodes, he been you know they've been having him a lot on TV, you know, yeah, like him a lot of yeah. And they keep magic. saying, oh, Cody Rhodes, he's got a lot of potential. He's gonna be the future. Like, when is that gonna start? Because uh, yeah. before somebody... you know it, well, he's gonna be at... on the tail end of it. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people. I mean, that I know this is a little off subject, but uh, um, Ted DiBiase, yeah, talking yeah. about his son when. Go back and listen to our interview with Ted DiBiase Sr. Yeah. And uh, him talking about his He's like, son. I don't know what's going on. He's but yeah, he's just been sitting backstage waiting for his chance to go, and they never give it to him. They bring, so. like, so many guys in and go with other guys, and they forget about other people. It's like, how you know, how you forget guys that, you know, who fathers wrestle for you guys? You know, they should be the comers you know. And mm-hmm. Well, to dispute that, dispute that argument, not mm-hmm. not everyone lives up to the expectations of their father. You know, you're right. Yeah, you're so, right. so yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, they're they're given a chance with uh with you're their right. their family history, but you can only give so much before, before you're yeah. just like, look, man, you, everybody can't be like the Rock. It's like, yeah, you're ta- <laughs> you're talented, but you know, you're not the top tier guy like yeah. we're expecting. And maybe that's the case with Cody Rose. Maybe they just don't see it. You know, I mean, they're just like, what they should do is they they need to deliver on the Cody Rhodes Gold Dust feud. Yeah, yeah. that would have been perfect, man. Yeah. Just, of... you know, just something to have a nice payoff for Mania or something yeah. at least. Um, just to see. Because maybe, I mean, maybe that's where their experience is coming. Maybe that's where their defiance is coming from. They're like, look, we've dealt with one of these kids before. And, you know, he wasn't one of our top guys. So, yeah. you know, this kid's, what, what's going to be so different? But, um, but yeah. So, anyway, so Cody Rhodes ends up defeating Zack Ryder. Uh, and then Ryback decides to attack Ryder. Uh, throwing him into the ambulance, um, just to prove that he could, I guess. Ryback yeah. rules. Like new action, or something like. He also has a new shirt, yeah. new merchandise. So yeah. uh, Ryback rules shirt. Ryback or uh, Doritos. Doritos. I'm glad you said that because uh, <laughs> he actually clarified that on on Twitter. He made a joke at that on his Twitter account saying. Yeah, I talked it up with the uh, with the O'Doyles, and uh, and now it's Ryback rules. <laughs> so, <laughs> apparently, he's taking care of the o- O'Doyles, so we're, uh, it's all right for Ryback rules now. Ryback's actually O'Doyle. He's had his name changed. Yeah, you know? yeah. He was a little kid in the back. Yeah, yes. yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't know when this was. It was after this match or before, but uh, yeah, Caitlin. Yeah, so it was a little bit later on in the night, I believe. Oh yeah, but Caitlin was talking to who? Caitlin and Natalia. 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 She like a phone. Got a phone yeah. number oh, now. The mystery number has a number now. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but the voicemail's not set up, so they won't answer whenever yeah. I call. It's but Cody totally Rhodes, weird how they do this stuff now. Damn it, T-Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> Cody Rhodes comes up and is like, oh, is it Cody? Is it Cody? And they, they oh my God, what Natalia is holds him down while... Here, let me grab your phone from you. Oh, what are you texting? What are you sending pictures But the thing, though, is, she is, oh, he's just posting stuff on Facebook. Go to info and look at his damn um, number. Yeah. <laughs> or, like, call it. Or he doesn't have it set up, but just yeah. call it while he's there. Yeah, call your number and see, you know. Wouldn't she ha- already have Cody Rose's number? Yeah, probably. Most I mean, they're co-workers. Yeah. So. I got to say, what cracked me up was Natalia was like, what's the number? I'll give it to Cody. He'll yeah. Yeah. I was like, what's Cody going to do? I got to say, what? Like, what? Last <laughs> Raw, did you see him when, uh, what was that match with the girls? Too so cool. He was like, he had that, uh, like. The, the Talking to the mic, buddy, yeah. when you're doing that. No. Uh, <laughs> what he had slacks on? What did he have slack? What was it? he was looking all cool? He was like leaning. <laughs> yeah, yeah like late, yeah. Yeah, I was like, I was <laughs> focused on that the pimp. whole time. <laughs> Joe, cool. grab my money. Like, oh man, cool. Kali is so cool. Joe, cool. <laughs> you grab my money. Be with my money. <laughs> I lay my down. I was about to say. That just cracked me up. Like Kali will figure it out. I'm like, yes, he will. He's a detective. <laughs> yeah. See, folks, this Sherlock is kind of. This is kind of episode when Tyler is good to speak his mind. <laughs> Doug, see, Doug's not here to to hold you back. Oh, you're now get, you're trying to start getting, people, oh, you're getting getting No, I'm not. I'm just picking. I know. I'm and just... stuff. Or am I? <laughs> Next week on the show. I do not know. <laughs> I don't know. Now I'm, I'm liking Kali in this little role he's doing. Joe Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Cool. Everything be okay. I got it. <laughs> Did you see the picture of him wearing the Mysterio mask? Uh, yeah. Is it real? <laughs> yeah. They have a big enough. It was mask. supposed to be like a SmackDown show, and um, and he was talking. He's wearing a, the Mysterio mask, but it like it doesn't cover his head <laughs> all the way. Like it, it stops like 
right above his nose. Wow. And so they're like, yeah, he's he's in disguise right now, and it shows him wearing the mask. I'm like, great, Kali. <laughs> Giant in disguise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... But, uh, but going back over to Raw, uh, we got to see The Shield going up against Team Hell No and uh, Kofi Kingston. Best match mm. in a long time. Oh um, definitely considered one of the match of, matches of the year. Uh, right up there with John Cena versus CM Punk for the yeah. number one contender for, for Mania that happened in Dallas. Um, just a great match. Every single person put, played their part mm-hmm. to a T. The Shield, not one of them looked dominant more than the other. They all looked equally aggressive. They all showed their strengths. You know, I got to say, like, this what I was saying earlier about yeah. Daniel Bryan. Absolutely. How, like, oh, my gosh. He, like. The crowd was ballistic But he was also him. playing that part where, you know, he was also frustrated you mm-hmm. know, that he, he lost, lost the title. Yeah. But, you know, he's just. It was it mad slash, you know. He came in aggressive. Yeah, aggressive, aggressive. Yeah. So the crowd was very hot for, for Dane O'Brien. Mm-hmm. Um, going into a frenzy, you could call it. You know, it was just yes. absolutely crazy. Yes. I loved every second of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Shield, as dominant as they are, end up getting the victory yeah. once again, which, you know, you kind of had to see coming because, yeah. you know, you don't want to have the, the new champs lose right away, unlike Wade Barrett and The Miz yeah. after Mania. So, um Hey, uh, <coughs> Kane took the pin. <laughs> yes. So, you know, you can't say that uh, Dana Bryan. Yeah, the so Dana Bryan is not the weakest link, but he could turn on Kane saying, you're the weakest link. I didn't lose. But, um, you know, it begs the question, is this the time for Daniel Bryan and Kane to go their separate ways now? Well, Let you- Kane go separate ways. He can go to whatever state and be a political person. He actually <laughs> uh, confirmed that that, that, he wasn't, is, that yeah. is rumor. Oh. So, but uh, but he is an intelligent guy. Yeah. So he is. Well, can you imagine him like being like running? You know what I'm saying? Like when he grows his hair back, or we say like bald head, and like <laughs> still have the one eye. Just can he still yeah. have the fire pyro yeah. whenever he enters a room or something? <laughs> <laughs> Your governor is here. <laughs> so um, but yeah. So so is this the time for Team Hell No to split up, or should they stay together a little bit longer? I think it's time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they already lost the title. I'm sure they'll get the rematch. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And then, like, they lose that. And then, see, they I told you run. I didn't, you know, Brian is go off. You know, I told you I wasn't the weak link. You lost the match. You blah, blah, blah. And then attack. And, or Kane just get pissed off and just attack. So Hugs yeah. don't work anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can only hug it out so many times. Yeah. My God. <laughs> so, uh, so, Tyler, is this, is it time? Time for uh, Hell No to, to say farewell? Hell no There's or a hell part yet. of me that like wants him wants him to break up and like have a few, but there's like a part of me that wants him like stay friends but still just separate, you know. Just, but just, it doesn't seem like they'll agree do to go their separate ways. Yeah, so. okay. but it doesn't seem like it, that would. I don't know. I mean, you can't. No, you kind of you kind of have to have there be a reason for them not. I mean, to get you, back you see them on Raw, you know. It's like they're like we're you know Daniel Bryan's going crazy and you know he's like oh we're not the champions anymore and then. One thing Kane says, and it's like, "What? Well, I'm I'm not the weakest link, you know." And he's gonna go paranoid. And I think with the momentum that Daniel Bryan's been building here lately, with the crowd interaction that that he's been getting, he needs to start moving up. Yeah, like he needs to do the singles route, start moving to the top, be a be a poseable threat for for either yep. for Ziggler. Time to go or, back up there. Yeah, um, some of Sam or Survivor Series, he's had like a strap on him, or at least in a you know net. Championship uh, tender uh, contendership for it, you know. I mm-hmm. see. I don't. I don't want him to get ca- lost in that mid card shuffle, though. Yeah. Um. Just because, like, they don't know where they're going with it lately. Um. So I think the only the only decision would be for him to split up and uh and move up, uh, yeah. go up, go up for one of the championships. Time for him to move up. Yeah. He's moving on up. So uh, I don't know. Let us know what you think on our Facebook page, WNS Podcast. Uh, next up, we got to see uh, Randy Orton going up against Jack Swagger. Um, surprisingly good match in yeah. this one, I thought. Um, both the, guys held their own, and uh, the people voted on the app. Yeah, the people <laughs> voted. Yeah. Like yeah. Daniel Swift, Archie uh, got like what nine percent. This and was then, already script, you yeah. know, planned out. So. It was the other two. It was Kali and R Truth. Kali got like seventeen percent, and like R Truth got like nine. Yeah, nine. Yeah, I voted for Kali. Yeah, well, you were like one of the twelve percent that did. So, yeah. um, <laughs> Joe Cool. <laughs> they didn't have a Joe Cool option. Damn so it. sad though. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so Orton goes up against Swagger. And Orton gives up the victory. Um, you know, like I said, both both guys held up their ends, and uh, yeah. it was uh, it was a pretty good match. Anything to add from that? Uh, I like Randy Orton. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Randy Orton. What's the difference uh, between? I, like, this year? Okay. Okay. I was making a joke. Orton. What's the difference between this year, this year's Predator technology and compared to last year's? <laughs> well, 2.0 Predator technology is far superior. I'm Randy Orton. Randy Orton. Pose. 3.5. Pose down. Down. <laughs> So, uh, I did, uh, I will admit, I went immature and I laughed at one of the comments that, that someone posted about the pre-show and Randy Orton. Um, they said, oh, the pre-show starts in 20 minutes. And just for you, for those who are wondering, Orton has already left to go to the ring. Because <laughs> they talk about, you know, Orton makes very slow entrances when he goes to the ring. But anyway. Get there in 30 minutes. Yeah. So, uh, so with uh, five minutes before the top of the hour, we got to see Triple H and Curtis Axel, you know, kick off. And, man, you want to talk about burying the new guy. Triple H did just that. Yeah. You know, Triple H was beating up on first, and then he, you know, he came back, and then, yeah. you know, then the stuff happened. Yeah, and Triple H starts getting woozy, and then, you know, he hits him, and then he starts feeling woozy again. Well, he this, tries this. to go back to the ring, but he can't, so he decides to sit down, and the trainer's there, and he's like, hey, give me some water. And she pours it on his head and stands up and stumbles around. The ref doesn't count to ten. There's no count out. It ends yeah. up being a no contest because... They're suddenly concerned. Um, then, you know, he kind of gets that sort of loopy look in his eyes, like, what's going on? And people will talk to him. He's just staring at you. Yeah, he's just staring what? at him. Like, I don't understand. Give me water. <laughs> yeah, so. I can spit it out. You know, he's definitely showing signs of wear from the cage match, yeah. uh, you know, which earlier in the night he, he had been approached by one of the trainers saying, hey, man, uh, the doc didn't clear you to compete tonight. And yeah. Triple H is like, you know, hey, does he like working here? Because he can go work somewhere else if he doesn't clear me <laughs> to work. <laughs> so, which I feel is sort of an abuse of power, which I yeah. think they should take into a storyline consideration. Um, but who he's knows? Suck it. Yeah. So he's his own lawyer, but whatever. Um, this is where, this is the second one where WWE is saying WWE.com. Yeah. Is saying something. Did misleading. Curtis Axel end the game? Yeah. Like, he didn't do anything. Because they went off air with him just sitting. Yep. Because mm -hmm. Curtis there. didn't do nothing Yep. to him. And oh. he's stumbling around and sitting on the floor. And, and it's, it's I just Curtis. I feel so bad for Axel because, like, that is. It's like, really? That's one of the worst ways that you can be brought in and just instantly buried. I mean. Thank you, Triple H. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate I got Paul it. Heyman on my side than Triple H. Yeah. It's like we're going to completely bury your talent, and now it's your responsibility to build him up. Well, I guess we got to see what happens next week. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the pains of working on a week-to-week -week show. Yeah. You have to come back. So, uh, so, yeah, so that's pretty much how we closed out Raw. Uh, I do have some hot topics for you. We don't have any Q&A this week since uh, there was only one question for us, and it's for Doug, but since Doug's not here, you know, we can't answer we for him. We answer for Doug. I mean, we could probably call him, but I don't think he'd appreciate that. He's probably already asleep in bed. Yeah. So um, we do have hot topics for you guys. Uh, for those who do not know, uh, NXT has released seven superstars, including Derek Bateman, Percy Watson, oh, yeah, and oh, Sakamoto. Man. So, and I know Tyler wanted to clear clarify on the other guys. Yes, the other ones that you don't know in here really doesn't want to I mention. How well, if I don't know, uh, how can I talk about him? Oh, yeah, that's a uh, good old people guy. Know, there's people that do know him. He's though. a good so, old boy. So there's people listening that do watch NXT, and they know the people. So, okay. so um, if you know these guys, make sure to comment in the comment thread for this week's episode. Uh, Briley Pierce. Don't know him. Um, Brandon uh Traven, um, can't Audrey, even say his name. He can't even say the name. Audrey, right. Marie, and Anya. Anya. Huh. So. Anya. Yeah. <laughs> You're making fun of these. Anya There's business. some people that you know they know him out there. So Anya, I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, I may Anya not know all face. the NXT people coming up, but you know, there's people that 
do keep up with all that stuff. I'm glad they kept some of the, good, the guys that we talked about earlier, like Xavier Woods. and You looked up that information on your phone. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's cheesy. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, final bit of hot topic. Uh, WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley posted on his Twitter that he is coming out with a new children's book called Hug It Out, featuring the former WWE Tag Team Champions Kane and Daniel Bryan. Uh, team Hell No. We should get it. Yeah, so uh, he will also be doing a Kickstarter campaign for his documentary called I Am Santa. <laughs> so, No, he's Mick Foley. He, you know, well, he's apparently had a recent fascination with, uh, with Santa Claus here lately. Uh, I don't know if you want to call it that, but, you know, who knows. But there you go. Uh, like we said earlier at the start of the show, we will be at Comic Palooza in Houston uh, this coming weekend. Tyler is going to be there Saturday. I'll yeah. be there Sunday. Hopefully, Doomsday be Wrestling, on Sunday NWA, as well. Houston, Scott Steiner. Big Papa Pump, you hook up. Holler <laughs> if you hear me. You think if anyone's walking around and they just happen to hear his voice, people are just going to be like, hey! <laughs> just holler if you hear him. Hey, Scott Steiner. I was like, ask him, hey, are you going to be the modifier? He'll be like, what? He probably won't remember that. What, like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? <laughs> are you hungry? Do you <laughs> wrestle a lot of countries? Have you re- how many countries have you wrestled? <laughs> hey, uh, tell, do the percentage thing. If you take my 33%, add it to your 25%, that gives you like a 66%. See, because some of Joe, the numbers don't lie. Your fat asses. Your fat asses. <laughs> uh, well, Scott Steiner promos. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. We need to we need to see if we can get him on the show. That would be awesome. That would be, that'd be great. The big so. bad booty daddy. <laughs> 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 I just imagine, like, I can pick, picture things in my head he would say. Yes. Oh, my so, gosh. So there you go. Total win. So don't forget to submit your questions on our Facebook page, WNS Podcast. Also, our YouTube page, WNS Video. You can check us out on WrestlingNewsSource.com, WrestlingNewsSource.com on Facebook. And subscribe to our show on iTunes by searching Wrestling News Source Podcast. WNS Podcast for Twitter and for the main site, WNS Source and WNS Podcast on Tout. There you go. Well, Ryan, we certainly do appreciate you stepping in. You. For Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Uh, Doug, I hope you, hope you get, get well, going Doug. better. So there you go. For the podcast crew, 